So um, briefly here, what I'm going to do is go over just two examples uh, of operons um, that are fairly commonly studied in bacteria. We have the LAC operon uh, and the TRP operon. Okay. Now the LAC operon is the first one. Uh, this is uh, for the use of lactose. Cells typically aren't using lactose, they're using glucose. Um, but if lactose is present and they're running out of glucose, then they can switch their metabolism if they have these sets of genes. So, uh, but, so, but they're not always going to be expressing these. So these are genes here uh, for essentially enzymes to use lactose. So you can think about that for a second. Uh, if there is no lactose present or available, why would a cell be expressing those genes? So they typically don't express those genes. What happens is uh, we have a gene here that, in the, that is going to always be doing this. It's always going to be producing uh, a repressor protein. All right, so that repressor protein is going to go and bind here to the operator. So the LAC O is the LAC operator, right? That means this here, which is the promoter, the LAC P is called the P for the P for the promoter, O for the operator, uh, it's shut down. So RNA polymerase, if it were to try to come in here and bind, won't be able to read because the repressor is in there. Now, uh, if, and this, so this is going to be a gene that is usually repressed, right? So we're gonna call it, it's gonna fall into that class of being an inducible. inducible operon, not just inducible gene, but a set of genes that are inducible. So uh, what will happen here is if we get lactose present, lactose is converted into a molecule called allolactose, which is very uh, structurally similar to it, uh, and that molecule can then bind to the repressor protein. So if lactose is present, if we have lactose, then lactose will bind to the repressor protein and remove it. Uh, and so then we have the repressor protein plus the lactose. And now this region is open and the RNA polymerase will come in and then bind and then be able to read and express these particular genes. And so they'll be able to produce the enzymes that can then uh, use lactose for metabolism. Right? And so that's an example of an inducible operon uh, using the LAC operon system. Cells also have to um, acquire certain amino acids from the environment uh, and some they can make themselves. So a TRP operon is for uh, making the amino acid uh, tryptophan. So let me divide this here. Separate example. So these are all enzymes needed to make tryptophan. And the, what they're going to be doing is being expressed typically uh, all the time and making tryptophan. Right? So tryptophan, it'll, they'll make tryptophan, TRP. And then the cell will use that tryptophan. However, what's going to happen is um, there are repressor proteins that are being made, just like here. And they're going to be being made all the time as well. So this is a gene that's separate. So this gene is right here. The repressor protein gene is right here along with those genes in the LAC operon system. This repressor protein, I put this little hash marks here because it's far away um, from these sets of, of genes here, but it's gonna also make a repressor. So I'll just put an R there for a repressor. The thing is the repressor protein, which would normally bind to the operator, can't bind to the operator without the help of tryptophan. But if tryptophan is then being used uh, to make proteins, it's not available and this repressor protein never binds. However, if you get an excess of tryptophan, which essentially means the cell is making tryptophan, it's making tryptophan, it's using the tryptophan, it's using the tryptophan, but then 
it's not using it. And now you're starting to get too much tryptophan. So what will happen is the repressor protein and excess tryptophan will form a complex and together they will bind to the operator and shut it down. These are repressible. This is an example of a repressible operon system. Because this is one that is typically on, it's usually making these enzymes, these different proteins here that are enzymes that are gonna either be, some of them joined with each other to make a bigger complex, some of them work alone, but we're not really going into the uh, metabolic pathway there. Uh, just the idea, they're all necessary as a group collectively, um, just the idea of, a, of an operon to make this particular amino acid. Um, but if the cell doesn't need so much of it, it can then shut that process down. And, that, and that's the idea. Right. And so there's all, you know, there's all kind of more details that we could go into with this, but this is really, uh, and you don't really need to know the names, you know, of the specific uh, proteins or enzymes coded for by the specific genes. It's more of just the overall concept that this is one way that cells regulate gene expression is at this particular level of uh, using an, an operator and repressor proteins. They can either be there all the time, shutting it down and then told to be removed or they can be around but not able to bind and then they have to be told to bind and then that place they're they're repressed okay and so use these as as your examples the uh, trp operon as the example of a repressible system and the lac operon as the example of the inducible system okay